Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and today I'm really excited because we are looking at a special park as this park looks absolutely insane and it is called Greenpoint Park 2. So I wonder if there's like a version 1 that the creator kind of expanded upon but it's created by Chin Chinga H-R-D-E-R-A-S. I know I totally pronounced that wrong if I tried to pronounce it. But it basically says a small realistic park with 18 attractions, six roller coasters, eight flat rides, three track rides, one a monorail and hotel. The park features a, a recreation of a real coaster called Accelerator, which I believe is at Knott's Berry Farm. And it's this one right here. And then it says credit given to the creators whose workshop items were used in the park. So there were some workshop items used, um, but I'm really, really stoked to check this out. And I wonder... I think those colors are the same on Accelerator as well in terms of the different color track. But I mean, as you're just kind of seeing some of the overview shots here, this is this looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm really, really stoked to go ahead and get started looking at this park. Oh, trees, trees. But yeah, just real quick before we get started, so you can kind of see, used 100% of the space. And this is a PS5 park, but used 100% of the space um, available on the map as you can kind of see the the edges there well i guess not 100 percent, pretty close to it though and created some mountains and stuff like that you've got some backstage that we will look at and talk about as well going around the park so i absolutely love 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 that detail and um let's you know look at the parking lot we'll look at everything from above at the end but let's go ahead and get down in the guest view and get started with this tour So here we are walking into the park and I mean you can see $15 to park oh my gosh that would be amazing um, I'm guessing this is an American style park or the creators American because the road signs are on the right side of the road get it the right side now I'm just messing around. Um, <laughs> but now here we are at the entrance, and you can see there's a road there to get to the bus stop. Um, there's also a road here to take us over to what looks like a hotel, I believe. Isn't this a so it's called the Sedgwick Hotel. Sedgwick Hotel. This is really, really cool. And it looks like we would have maybe hotel rooms in there. I mean, as you can see on the ground a little bit where the path goes, where the guests would go. Um, we got some parking back here for guests. You've got some little backstage stuff. And you can see the coffee shop. You can see the wing coaster right there, the wooden coaster. I mean, there's just so many good sight lines in this park. I love this little hotel. Um, this is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and hop in the park, though. Because this is a theme park we're supposed to be looking at. So there's the exit. Oh, hotel guest show pass. Okay. So we got some turnstiles there. Oh, I wonder what... Hmm, interesting. Looks good. Wait, oh, what? what is this? Oh, that's the exit. My fault. That was the exit. I don't know why I went out the <laughs> exit. It said, I saw that sign that said... Hotel people show pass. So we got a security checkpoint, which is nice. You know, really straightforward, nothing too crazy. I like the entrance. So you walk through the security checkpoint, then you've got tickets. Okay, this is cool. It's like three levels. It's almost like, like three tiered, because that's what you see at theme parks a lot, right? Um, and so now, new home of Accelerator. So Accelerator, got moved from Knott's Berry Farm is I'm guessing where the creator is going with that. But I love this view right here where you see the two lift hills. That is really cool. I think that was a wing coaster. Although look at that first drop now, I don't know. But there's the wooden coaster. Really, really cool. So then we walk in. Awesome. I mean, it kind of gives me, the entrance kind of gives me Six Flags Fiesta Texas vibes. So you got this nice little water feature. You got a really cool ride skin there for the carousel. That is 
incredibly detailed. Looks really good. Um, let's go that way last. Those coasters look awesome. So we're going to save them for last. So if we head this way, looks like in here is a gift shop. So I wonder if the inside's decked out. No, they did what I did and not wasting percentage on the interior of the park, which is nice. So I love that big Ferris wheel. It gives a good line of sight as you walk in and you can see the, is that the B&M invert behind it? Yeah. And then, so we head over here. So that's a really big gift shop is what that's supposed to be. And then got a flat ride here. We got the world whirl twirl. Got a small Venetian carousel. Tommy CM's favorite ride. Barrel of Squids. Ooh, I like that name. That is a good name for that. Oh, Country Roads. You know, that um that reminds me of that uh Country Roads, take me home. That's all you'll get out of me singing, because I'm a terrible singer. Um yeah, so let's go ahead and ride Country Roads, shall we? And I will suggest, because if you look, look at all the trains that are waiting, I do think there you probably should use a little bit less trains. Um, there we are. I like the little music that goes with this too. You know, let's get in a different... Yeah, I'll do look forward mode. Although, that Statue of Liberty hat kind of gets in the way. <laughs> there we go. We'll just do orbit, shall we? This is really, really well done. I like that. It's almost like it's the Golden Gate Bridge. Or at least that's what I view that as. Because now you got these little like city buildings. You got the traffic lights. So it's like you're going cross country. Because now you've got kind of more deserty area. You had mountains first. You had countryside. Then you had the big city. Now you got western. Um, so somewhere in like the Midwest, like Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, something like that. Um, this is really, really a cool touch. Uh, it looks like we got a little transfer track area right there, which is awesome to see. Yeah, as you look at the overview of this, it kind of gives me the, not necessarily maybe full country, but you kind of got your Montana, Dakota style right here. And then you've got the, the city. I mean, I see that as California, um, San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge. That's kind of more the city area, urban. And then you've got the, the western part of the state. So I think that's really cool. You got a little transfer track here, which is nice. Um, so I'd definitely like to see that. Um, it would be good, though, if there was like a, a door around here somewhere that staff could get into to access that. Um, like maybe having a door here on the back and then you had an, um, or not even, you kind of had the, maybe a door right here that trucks could drive through or something. You know, just a, just a suggestion, but I love what you did there with that. And so let's go ahead and look at what we've seen so far, just kind of at an overview. Um, I know we got that small coaster there. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, but I definitely like the layout here, and I like how right when you come in the park, you have the opportunity to go right or go left. So it gave you those different options, you know, which is nice to see. Um, oh, that's... Oh, that's why that was over there. Okay, we'll definitely have to go check out that Costa Coffee. Um... Greenpoint. I like the name too. And then you got the monorail going around the whole park, which is nice. I mean, the views are spectacular. 
spectacular. So let's go ahead and take a ride on Dr. Caterpillar. Caterpillar, deal with it. <laughs> like it. Um, let's see. D D oh, it's Da Caterpillar. Or Da Caterpillar. Go. <laughs> Can't speak. Da Caterpillar. There we go. All right, now as we're just waiting for guests to get on. Ooh, there we go. Gosh, that thing is booking out of the station. So that was Da Caterpillar. <laughs> um, I'm just going to check at night real quick because I want to see if um, anything really should be looked at at night or written at night. No, everything looks like it's a daytime. I mean, which is nice to see. Because honestly, I prefer daytime parks. Um, it's because most of us visit parks in the daytime. If I, if I go to a park at night, I, wanna, um, I want it to be like, you know, going on the Beast or Holiday World or something where you can't see anything on the rides. So, I'm not really big on rides lit up too much. Um, so, this looks really good. So, that was a nice little kid's ride. I mean, it is booking it out of that station, though. <laughs> um, so, let's head back this way. You got the Larson Looper, I think is what those are called. No, that is not a coaster. For some people who think it's a coaster, it's not. And then we've got the one of these stations right here. Okay, normally I would say covering that up, but I actually like what you did with this here, where you've got some makeshift elevators right there. And then when you walk up this way, this then takes you to the monorail. And there's the exit, and then there's the entrance to it. And you got a little staff room right there, so I really like what you're able to do to try to put it in this space. So I think that looks fantastic. Got the Larson Looper. I wonder if there's a reason for those scaffolding supports to be right there. I guess just for lighting and stuff. Oh, that looks awesome, that coaster. But now, ooh, Miner's Flume. Okay. Enter here. This is cool. This gives me, like... I don't even know. This is very... It's like a... Silver Dollar City or Dollywood style area with how this feels right here. So there's where we enter. Here is where we would exit, where we would pay uh, an obscene amount of money to for a photograph. <laughs> so this is best at night. Alright, so let's turn it to night time. I like the queue. Only thing in this hurts us on console, a two meter path for the queue is so detrimental to your um, to your percentage. It uses twice as much percent as a four meter queue path does. So yeah, it's pretty it be pretty harmful there. But I like how you've we go up and over this way. So I think that's a pretty cool touch. And this is an awesome station. You got the open window there. You got the massive ceilings, you got the support beams. I mean, this is awesome. Just awesome. So let's go ahead and take a ride on the water. Um, the wa log, well, gosh, the water, the log flume, and I'll chat afterwards.
Now, there are a lot of things that I really like about this area. And first off is how secluded it is and how different it feels from the rest of the park. Like, even just looking at this, this feels so different. I think you did a good job with all the foliage. You've got the walkway around here for employees that they need it. You've got the splash zones. I mean, the station is phenomenal, especially with how you did the pathing in there. Um, and I mean, I know you can see the curbs and stuff, but at the end of the day, that's fine. Um, I mean, this is just absolutely phenomenal. And then how you had it kind of going inside this kind of cave area, I think is really, really cool and well done as well. And you've got like an exit area. Um, you know, you got a filtration thing up there. My only question is, where does that water go with the filtration? Um, I just, I don't know. But yeah, it looks really good. And I love even here, look, you've got kind of like a, um, uh, this would be an exit if need be. If you got to make an exit for something. So you follow this around and it'll take you to one of the backstage areas. So you got another exit there. Or maybe not. It's just exit to exit. <laughs> um, I thought it took you all the way down. But then you can walk up here. Either way, I think it's so well done. And it reminds me in the sense of when um, NH99 did his... Um, gosh, what was the name of that park? Um, the one that was based off Disneyland. Um and he basically had all his exits on his mine train coaster that was probably pretty complicated to <laughs> make sure you complete properly um, but yeah so this is the splash zone so let's see here we go that's awesome awesome i love the detail i mean this little shack right here is nice all right, so now I believe we're going to be going to Accelerator next. So you got 360-degree power. Okay, so that's the name of the Larson Looper, and it's, I guess, you do a 360-degree loop. So that makes sense. There we are. That's awesome. Here we go. Coaster's about to launch. I don't know the actual height of this one in real life, so it seems to me like they took stealth and made an extended version of it, essentially. Um, but it looks really cool. looks really well done. I know there's no inversions. Oh, that's an awesome building. That's Street Fox Coffee. I'll have to make sure we go back by there when we come back so we got accelerator which that is an awesome custom sign that you made and so this is the one that is a real life coaster that was moved from Knott's Berry Farm along with all the design and stuff so we got the exit sign or the VIP entrance so the fast pass you got the exit there for employees got the star wheel we got another um, another flat ride here so I wonder what's the use of using all these scaffolding pieces because that's like two or three flat rides we've seen this on now we got a little food shop area which is nice and then looks like over here we got a little car service oh there's the entry to accelerator and then we have this one so you know what? let's go on this one first then we'll hop over to accelerator um, I love a good B&M invert. So now we head up the entrance. You got the queue. I like the... You got the um, TVs in the queue, which is nice. We head around this way. Looks like we got a transfer track, which I'd love to see. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. Just what I don't like doing. There we are. I like the station. I like it a lot. Um, so now it's called Red Re Ravina. Ravina. I'm just terrible to pronounce this stuff. So G-Force is definitely high for vertical Gs. Um, so we'll look at that. Um, let's go ahead and hop on the coaster.
right, there are a couple of suggestions that I want to give on this coaster. The first one is going to be the loop. You got to go teardrop shaped looped. You can't go um, that uh, symmetrical circular one. I think Gerslauer might use those a little bit, but those are old Schwarzkopf loops. And at least in my understanding, it's because of the G-forces that it applies. Also, it goes way too quick through this element right here. Like, at that point, you're probably going at the fastest speed of the whole ride, and it, you get whipped through an inline twist. That is way, way, way too quick. Um, I think that Cobra rolls nice. Now with the zero G roll there, I think you needed to stop smoothing at this point and then skip a few before you started smoothing again because you want the track piece to become level at some point. It doesn't really ever get level to where it's not banked some degrees. It's like it's like casually banked a little bit to the right and then you instantly start banking to the left. Um, at least that's just my opinion on that. But I love the realism thoughts behind this. You got your your backstage area for this building, which is great to see. Love it. And it's connected to the backstage area here, which connects to the general backstage for the whole park as this kind of goes around. So this is where, you know, around to the other coasters over there. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool and well thought of. Um, and then we head around here and you've got your stairs up to the maintenance track, which is awesome. But if you've already built all these custom supports and stuff around it, I would just remove the actual supports from this coaster. I mean, that's just me, though, but, you know, it was good. I just wanted to give my little feedback on a couple things. So here we have Accelerator. I don't know why I'm talking like that. But you got Phillips 66 Station, which is nice. Those are old school. Night or day. Uh, we'll stick with daytime. Let's see real quick. Yeah. Oh. No, I mean, it's not really lit up enough for night. So. We'll stick with daytime. Stick with what I know best. All right, here's the launch. That's really cool. Love to see it. And then, love the station. You got a little operator's booth there. Another little operator's booth over here. Oh, that's cool. Giving it that unique design. That is a really, really cool touch. So now if we look here at these stats, everything all green. G-Force is good. Max speed 76 miles per hour. Max height of 168 feet. So let's go ahead and hop on the coaster. Actually, we're going to ride this one in seat view. All right, so that was fantastic. I loved it. Um, loved the extra little part to it other than just going up the hill and coming back. The launch was great. Once again, the backstage here, I mean, this is like your little, um, what do they call it, the little launch house or whatever where it'll have some of the controls and the systems and stuff. I mean, that's just awesome. You got, that's a cool thing I'm going to start using. Um, because that looks like it could be like an exhaust fan or something. And then you got another backstage here. Looks really good. You got all this random clutter. And then you've got the transfer track here. And you got stairs to get up there. So I definitely like it. I think you did a great job with that. Um, one thing I would say on here, let me fast forward again to make sure I'm correct on this. Um, yeah, so you start your launch a little bit too early. And what I mean by that is look at where the coaster stops. It stops there because it, the cable, the hydraulic cable, connects to the coaster track there. Half the coaster is still in the station. So what you need to do on this is you actually need to do drive tires till about here. 
and then have your coaster launch because then at that point it will have the the entire um, coaster outside of the station if that makes sense so now let's get back into plip cam mode we are halfway done in terms of the coasters in this park we got the pirate ship ride I mean look at the views of that what I believe is a wing coaster yep it is a wing coaster that gives me um, Dollywood vibes like major Dollywood vibes right there so as we head back this way looks like Voyage Revenge so that's the entrance to the pirate ship we have this really cool Street Fox coffee there we go, looking like you got a menu. Oh, you got seating area. You got a restroom. I would just put a door on that. Like cover that part, part of the wall up and put a door. Then you head back out this way. You have, oh, you have a little seating area. Because, I mean, if you got a coffee place, you got to have somewhere for people to sit, right? That is cool. Once again, here's the carousel. So this is back in kind of the main plaza. Okay. I love that building. And it's connected to... What is this connected to? Oh, it's almost like a mall. Even though it's not, but it's... Yeah, once again, just I just have a door on the bathroom. But this looks good. Oh, and you built in stairs. You got the elevator. I mean, love the touches of realism here. Actually, it's not even touches. It's... I don't know what the word would be to... <laughs> to emphasize the realism. But, oh, look at this. So that's where we're going next. Dragon's Plunder. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a statement that I do think, at least for that initial part of that coaster, the creator probably got some Wild Eagle inspiration from Dollywood, because I did something very similar with my coaster that I got from that I got the idea from that as well. So now if we head over this way. To Dragon's Plunder. So we got a little boat ride that goes just around the area. So we'll have to look at an overview of that in a second. But this is the entrance to... Okay, Dragon's Plunder. I have no idea what this is. Uh-oh, we're going down to the pits of hell. Uh-oh. Oh, we got treasure... Oh, wait, is this a coaster? Okay, we got a little station. Let's see. It's an RMC. Alright, so Dragon's Plunder. Stats all green. Lateral G-Force is probably a little bit higher. But it's got no inversions, one airtime hill. And this is not what I was expecting. Um, let's go ahead and hop on the coaster. That was definitely different. Um, I think that was cool. I think it's a cool kind of concept and idea. Um, it's definitely not equitable on either on between the two sides of the coaster as you're basically turning left the whole time, which in that sense it reminds me of the legend at Holiday World. <laughs> um, but that's a really cool kind of design and idea. And then I want to before we hop back in plip cam mode as this is called Roost Island Adventure. So you can see, I mean, this queue is just fantastic. Once again, all this queue to go on this boat ride, but it is, like, this is fantastic. My goodness. Wow. That's so good. All right, so let's kind of get an overview. Oh, you go into the dragon's mouth. Okay. See what's in here. Oh, hippos. I didn't expect that. 
Oh, that's not creepy at all. This is a lot more than what I was expecting. This is really cool, though. I love the jungle noises as well. Wait. Oh, we go this way. Okay. Oh, what's that? Crab? Or not crab. Scorpion. I don't know why I initially thought crab. Yeah, that's um really cool. I'm glad I'm glad I took the time to go look at that. As you can see the whole layout there, that's spectacular. Once again, I mean this station, just awesome. There we go, we've got another station for uh the monorail. And I just think there are too many monorails on here. Because look, they're all waiting here because not many people ride them. Um so they're waiting for like a full train and it's just taking too long. So I would just if we look at, I'm trying to see if there are no monorails there. No monorails there. Or maybe I would, I wonder if there's a way, because I haven't really built the monorail, to shorten it in the, basically to say how long you wait or what capacity it needs to have to move on. So let's rename LaShawn Plipcam. Let's head back this way. So there's the exit to that ride. So we want to view it from a different perspective. So Timber Flight Station inspired by YouTuber Silverette. Okay. Oh, there we go. So we got the Logger's Run as the coaster. I mean, look at this. This definitely has to be inspired by Wild Eagle. This looks phenomenal. Like, so picturesque. Um, that looks so good. And there we go. We have the... Once again, the on-ride photo station. Let's just take time to admire the beauty of this coaster. Wow, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to hop out of flip cam mode here. And the reason is I don't want to be running over guests all the time. Um, but you can see the two cues here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, actually, no, we'll just, I'll, exp I'll go ahead and give my thoughts right after this one. So we got Timber Flight, and I like how you've got the name for both of them on there. And ooh, that's a cool way to do that. So because we don't have pillars that are this rough brick style, but they've got it for the chimneys, just putting them on top of each other like that is a really cool touch. Maybe adding a little pillar cap on the top would be good too. But I love how you go up this way and you you walk across. So I believe this is inspired off of Silverette Station and No Name Landia would be my guess. Um, but this is really cool. I love this part here, just like the little shade that this provides in the light because look how cool that looks. Um, so let's go ahead and look at these stats here. On Timber Flight, we'll go ahead and get started and hop on the coaster. Oop. But if we look at these stats, um, G-Force is definitely a little bit higher for both laterals and verticals. So we'll have to kind of see where that's at. But max speed 64 miles per hour, over 100 foot drop, two inversions, and we'll talk. Well, wow, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> So that was not Logger's Run, but Timber Flight. And 
I think the first drop was really awesome because it was so unique and different. It would be cool to see something like that on a dive coaster because that's more like a, um, a B&M floorless style. Then you got your zero G roll, which is nice. And then you've got your, I forget the technical name. I guess that's technically, is it a, I don't think that's technically an Immelman. Is it Immelman? You come back in the same direction. Um, yeah, I think it maybe goes through that zero G roll a little bit fast. Uh, but the only thing I would suggest on here is I think you did a really good job is to bank more. So like right here, even though it's right near the end, I think you need to bank it more to the left um, because it would give a little bit of a smoother ride. But so far of the coasters we rode, that's my favorite. Um, and then, oh, I recognize this little transfer track. So that transfer track is one that I made for, and I posted it to the workshop, um, and I made it for the single rail coaster I made in my collab park with my wife Jasmine and um, web gaming which by the way I need to see how Corey's doing so yeah now if we head down the exit we head past the oh, 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 oh there we are head then we got the photos on ride photo section we got the on ride photo section there too what's this go to Oh, that's the backstage. So we got Loggers Run. Yeah, this looks great. I love the buildings. Like the the unique shape of the buildings here. Like this kind of reminds me. It gives me, obviously it's not as tall, but like Mystery Mine at Dollywood is the one that comes to mind for something like that. You got stairs here, which goes to some little door up there all right so this is a gci it looks like using the gci trains which is nice um but it's a wooden gnarler coaster in the game but using rmc trains stats are fantastic look at the results once again lateral is a little bit higher um, but let's go ahead and chat afterwards So that was loggers, lodgers, loggers, <laughs> loggers run. And I'm interested to hear your opinion on what do you believe was your favorite coaster in the park for those of you watching. I think it was loggers run or lodgers run, however you say. It. <laughs> um, I think that was a lot of fun. I think these two here on the left side are definitely the showstoppers. I think accelerator would then be next. Um, then the invert, then the indoor coaster. And then the kids coaster. But this was a really, really good park. And oh, one thing we didn't check out before is if we um, if we go through this way, get the security office. And I believe this is where you go to exit the park because you got backstage there. You got a monorail stop as well. And then here we got barbecue ribs. Mmm. Although I never get ribs. I always go pulled pork or brisket. Oh my gosh, my cousin. He owns a... He's like the grill master for... Ooh, we got a pool. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, we got used towel bin. Oh, you got towels in here. Oh, this is cool. The detail is just awesome. And you got a nice pool. Trying to start looking and saying, Hey, will it be a good good photo for the for the episode maybe that i don't know um 
but yeah, my cousin is a grill master for this restaurant that he is part owner of, and oh my gosh, his brisket is just absolutely insane. So good. Um, Costa Coffee. Now, I know that Tommy P had built something like this. I don't know if this is the exact same one or if this guy did his own, um, but this is a really cool job. The detail in here is awesome. And yeah, so let's go ahead and look at an overview again so we can see, you know, you got the hotel parking right there. You got the pool. We got the guest parking over here. Um, you got bus drop off. This would be probably employee parking as you've got a little um, entry and exit way right there. And then we've got a ton of backstage. So you've got the areas where you've got the trucks dropping stuff off. You've got a couple, couple little buildings here. And then basically everything's connected. So you can see how the backstage can get up here. Um, can also get to that station building if need be. And then it goes around the whole park. So everything's been thought of, which is really, really nice to see. Um, I, I mean, to me, that's when I build a park. It's all right, how can I get the realism, the detail, the backstage, all that stuff put in properly? And I think this was done really well. And then the one backstage area we didn't really look at yet was over here. So yeah, it's just right, this little connection here. Yeah, so I really, really enjoyed that. Um, as I said before, we'd love to hear your thoughts. I believe I checked everything. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, this is available to download for if you have a PS5. I am putting the link to the Frontier Workshop and or where this is located on the Frontier Workshop. So you can download it if you want to check it out. I highly recommend it. This is an amazing park. Um, absolutely loved it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already, as uh, we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the like button. And hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Talk to you all later.